What's up, everybody? It's Mark LaBelle from Dirty Honey, uh, checking in from quarantine. The editors at Revolver asked us to be a part of the last show series for Road Crew Relief, and uh, we're going to be looking back on some past shows and looking towards the future, too. So, um, The last show that we played was at the El Rey Theater uh, here in Los Angeles. Um, the Amazons were opening for us. They're an awesome band from the UK. We really love those guys, and uh, they have a tune called Doubt It that I've grown really fond of uh, after being out with them. Uh, so check it out. Um, my best memory from that show was that my dad was in town visiting um, California for the first time in a while. And he's kind of aware of what's going on, obviously, with, with social media and Facebook with Dirty Honey. But um, he's never, like, seen, um, you know, a show, especially a headlining show. He was supposed to come to... Vegas to watch us open up for Guns N' Roses and Southwest Airlines canceled his flight at the last minute and he had a whole travel issue that wound up in him not being able to come and you know I kept telling him don't worry about it I think the L-Ray is going to be even better so you know he came to the L-Ray show it was a sold out show on a Friday night in LA and like hometown crowd and it was so wild and uh my dad was like moved to tears after that show so that's something I'll, I'll never forget um you know and sharing that with him it was obviously awesome and then the next day we we went on a motorcycle trip together so uh the whole weekend was really special um our crew at that show we only have a crew of one his name is pat he's our tour manager he is the best he is a renaissance man he's the guitar tech the bass tech the drum tech my in-ear monitor tech he's also the tour manager our like tour accountant he wears a lot of hats and uh we're super grateful to have him on our team and uh you know he's an invaluable part of our group he keeps us safe he drives he's he's all over the place he's the best um I don't know if there was a standout song from the set list, but um, there was a moment, I don't even remember which song it was that we were performing, but I, I like climbed the scaffolding at that show and sang part of a song from like, I don't know, like 40 or 50 feet in the air. Um, it was just like a very Eddie Vedder type thing to do. And it was the first time I've ever done it. I think I was just a little drunk and felt, um, some bravado or something and, and got some confidence to climb up the rafters it was probably pretty stupid looking back on it um is it weird or poignant looking back on that show now um yeah it is i think uh you, you look back and you're definitely more grateful to have had you know a, a big show at home and to have that experience at home is cool um yeah, you know, it's, yeah, looking back, it's pretty strange to think that, that that's the last show for a while because we had a pretty ambitious 2020 planned and now that's obviously, uh, everything's been sort of thrown, thrown for a loop. So, um, yeah, that was definitely a special show regardless of, of this happening. So the last show I went to as a fan was... Aerosmith in Las Vegas. Um, it was the second time I saw the show. Um, when we opened for Guns N' Roses in Vegas, two of our fans um, came up to me after the show um, and they said, hey, we know it's your birthday. We have these two tickets for Aerosmith um, Thanksgiving weekend and we can't go to the show. So we figured we'd give them to you their front row tickets. Uh, here's two tickets. And I was like, what the hell? Like, You know, this is... This obviously doesn't happen every day, and uh, obviously Vegas is a pretty short drive from L.A., so um, I happily took the tickets, and I'm still grateful to them. Today, Justin and Kirsten um, were the ones who gave me the tickets, and I took Justin Simoleon, the bass player from, from Dirty Honey, to the show with me a few weeks later, and uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. We had a really good night. We actually met up with... Um, Brent Fitz, he's the drummer from Miles Kennedy and Slash and the Conspirators, and um, he took really good care of us, took us to the airport. We just like happened to bump into him at the show, and uh, he took really good care of us and showed us all around Vegas and some cool spots, so we had a good night. Um, and my best memory from that show was when like we were front row, obviously. I mean, we were like leaning on the stage, and Justin can get really excited and he uh he just like 
grabbed me and screamed at me. He's like, there's Joe Perry. Oh my God. And uh, he was just a little kid for, for like two hours at that show. It was pretty fun. So was I. Um, a standout song from that set uh, was Aerosmith played Crazy for the first time in a long time. And I love that song. And it sounded awesome as per usual. So uh, I was really, I don't think I've ever seen them play that live. So I was happy to catch that. Um, is it weird or poignant looking back on that show now? Yes, because I don't know if I'm ever going to see Aerosmith play again. Um, but that was a really good show to to leave on if, if that is the case. But I'm sure we'll see him again. Steven Tyler doesn't sit still. Um very well, kind of like me. So I'm sure he'll be doing something soon. The hypothetical, it's the last night before the end of the world and you're booking the final concert ever. What's the bill? My bill would be Aerosmith, number one, obviously, favorite band, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, The Stones, Rage Against the Machines, uh, Rage Against the Machine, sorry, The Black Crows, Pearl Jam, and obviously Dirty Honey would play right before Aerosmith because that's a dream of mine. Um, and I literally, what's the band set list? What's each band set list? I just have every band play everything from their catalog because it doesn't say that this concert has to be one night. So every band is going to be busy for a, quite a while doing every song they've ever written. And I'm going to film it and I'm going to put it out on the internet a couple weeks later. Um, just for fun, what if the show's bill could only be non-rock or metal artists? Uh, any bands or artists dead or alive uh, obviously along with the artists that I already mentioned um, I'd include every incarnation of Chris Cornell's projects I love him um, and I'd love to see Freddie Mercury and Queen do their thing um, Sam Cooke I'm a big fan of Sinatra B.B. Albert and Freddie King Otis Redding um, they would all be really high on the list for me just to name a few were we scheduled to be playing shows right now? Yes, we were. Um, in particular, I was looking forward to playing for the first time in Japan, Australia, and Europe. All those things have pretty much been been rescheduled or postponed indefinitely, so that's obviously not good. Um, yeah, I was really looking for. I was really looking forward to playing. I mean, literally in all those places. Japan, I had like a whole food tour mapped out. Australia, I was excited to go back to because um, we were supposed to be recording at the same time. Um, and, and then obviously doing shows at the Byron Bay Blues Fest, which is supposed to be like one of the best festivals you can go to anywhere in the world. Um, and particularly uh, in, in Europe, I was really excited to play Italy. Um, that was where I sort of got my start back into music. I lived in Italy for a little while and started performing while I was living there. And um, it'd be nice to come full circle and do shows there, you know, with, with a project that's obviously known now. And, and uh, you know, Italy is a special place to me. I go, go there quite a bit. And um, I was really looking forward to playing shows there for the first time with my band as, at a sold out show in, in Milan. So that would have been cool. We'll get there. I'm really hoping to get there soon. Um, did we have any cool songs we were adding to the set list um, or new merch that we were going to be selling? Yes. And yes, we've been slowly filtering new songs into the set. Um, like I said, we were going to record in Australia, so we have some stuff ready to go, and we've been playing stuff on the Rolling Sevens tour that's new and people are really excited about, and um, there's a lot more of it like ready to go. So as soon as we can get into a studio, we're going to record the new stuff, and obviously those will be filtered into the set list as well. And we had some new um, merch for the song Heartbreaker that we're sitting on. Uh, that'll be coming out at some point, I'm sure, too. Um, and what's the next show you have planned after things clear up? Uh, I hope it'll be somewhere in Europe, obviously. I'm dying to do shows there. Uh, one of the last things I, I heard, actually, was I did a gig with Slash and, like, Billy Gibbons and um, Kenny Arnoff and Daryl Jones from the Rolling Stones for, uh, for Gibson before we went out on the Rolling Sevens tour. And I was talking to Slash uh, at one of the rehearsals one day, and... He was like, have you guys been to Europe yet? And I was like, no. And he was like, man, they are going to love you there. So I'm like, just everybody, everybody's told me that. Miles Kennedy's told me that. Mark Tremonti's told me that. Um, 
anybody we've talked to about Europe and having not been there yet, they're just like, they are going to love Dirty Honey. So we're excited to get there. Are you staying in playing shape right now? Yes. I still do vocal stuff every day, record demos, play guitar every day. So, um, you know, that's, that's pretty easy. Nothing gets you in shape like doing shows, but we, uh, I, I try to do what I can. Um, what live streams or online videos have you been watching at home? I watched a few of the live quarantine things that artists have done, um, sitting on their couches and performing, but, um, that's kind of ran its course to me. I think it's not, uh, I, I'd like to see some more interesting content being made, um, in this weird time, even though it's tough to do, but, uh, I've been binging just on Howard Stern. I, I'm so glad he's on the air. I'd, I'd lose my mind if he wasn't um, doing his show these past few weeks. I'm glad he, he's doing it from home and it's really good. And uh, everybody's getting Sirius XM for free right now. And uh, that's that's a major addiction of mine is listening to his show. And, um, you know, he does he does about 12 hours every week. So that's a good distraction during all this. Uh, are you working on new music while quarantined? Definitely. How else am I spending my time? Um, you know, normally in off time, I'd be playing a lot of hockey and like working out, riding bicycles and riding motorcycles. So obviously hockey and like working out is kind of out of the question. I still try and do what I can, but, uh, riding motorcycles is pretty much the only activity that's been sort of enhanced by all this just because there's nobody on the road anymore especially in LA it's like every freeway is open which is good um but yeah pretty much as soon as I finish doing this video I'm packing up to go up to the mountains and go riding and that'll be the next couple days for me go camping and riding and maybe find some hikes um that'll be fun bands crews as well as musical artists are really suffering right now tell us a little bit about your personal tech and your band's crew well like i said we only have one tour manager so um he wears a lot of hats but uh he does really well with time off i'm sure he's doing something far more interesting right now than me um he is a true rock and roller in every sense of the word and if i were able to put a picture up of him right now you would understand he is the best and uh, I'm sure he's happy pretty much in any environment. And um, he's like literally one of the best guys you could you could have around. So he, he's fine. I'm sure he'll be okay. We'll take care of him when we get back to work. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. Everybody stay safe. Uh, keep your hands clean and your mind dirty. Cheers. We'll see you on the other side.